Look, so basically, so yeah, we're at um, go to the hospital, right? You know, for for good reasons, which is good. And I get to hold my little niece for the first time, right? And so she's you know resting her head, you know, on my elbow, sort of right there. <laughs> um, and um, you know, it's it's honestly, it's such a beautiful moment, right? And then all of a sudden, I like I feel in my hand, you know, because my hand is you know around her back, so I just hear some, I feel some movements, I feel some like you know some force, yeah. right? So it turns out. I copped the first poo. Oh, well done, dude. Poo. Congratulations, I, man. I got the first poo. Um, Dean must yeah, be spewing. He must be sp- I know. I feel bad. I feel like I've stolen that moment from him. <laughs> but, you know, he's the real winner at the end of this, you know. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, that's our little story into why Dino's not here. But Yeah, um, yeah so Dean's, Dean uh, and his uh, wife, the owner, have had their first child. They have, yeah. Uh, you're an uncle now as well. Uncle Matza. So, yeah. Congratulations been, to them. That's it. It's Happy times, happy times, and uh, we're in a new studio now. Yeah. So look at look at this, man. Look at these AFL enjoyers for enjoyers of AFL. And it's not a green screen either. We can see that. No, well. we we can see that. We can see that. that's uh, that's some nice contrasting blue and red right there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, pizza Pizza Hut is not gonna not gonna like the oh, color contrast. Pizza, pizza Hut is gonna be pissed, man. Uh, but you know what? Since we're talking about birth and birth dates, right? I did get you a little something, something, right? Oh. Because April April the fourth was uh, Georgie's B day. Oh. So I, I got I got you. A little something. Well, I didn't man. know about this. No, Live no, on the no. Pod present. That's it, man. No, Thank you, James. It. No, all good, man. All good. I'm assuming it's a footy card. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> possibly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is so <laughs> funny. Bro. Oh, Aaron Sanderland's footy card. Look at that, man. It's signed by the great man himself. <laughs> is it? It's signed by Get the great stuff, man. Good stuff, dude. This is hilarious, man. Oh. Thanks so much. No, good, man. It took me a, a second to process who it was. I'm like, what's Luke Ryan doing on my screen? <laughs> it's Luke Ryan. <laughs> But it's Sandilands. So oh, if anyone doesn't know, Sandilands like one of my favorite players. And there was like a, a pod we did last year where I kind of told the boys that Sandilands like one of the goats. Yeah. He, and they just pissed themselves for ages. See, he's being modest. He said one of the goats. He said uh, Sandilands is the goat. It, look, that, man, those words the definitely, they definitely came out of your That mouth, is so man. good, man. Thanks, bro. Nah, all I good. appreciate it. All good. Nah, yeah, put it up on the top. Just replace Sard. Sorry, bro. Sorry, we'll stack them up. But yeah, nah, now we've got to. That's funny, he, man. Oh, he, thanks so much. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, no, all good, man. All I'm, good. I'm 27 now, guys, so my life's over. Yep. Yeah, I'm 26, so I guess at the end. You've know, you got one more year. I've got one more year. We both actually, year. it's 30. 30 is when it ends, I've been told. Fair enough. You know what? Just enjoy these last three years, man. I don't know. Well, um, hopefully we see a Carlton flag before then. You know what, man? Look, you if know, we do by 30, what else do you want, man? With the amount of corruption happening with these decisions, man, yeah, maybe. 100%. We're paying like, everyone possible. We've got the Prats. We've got everyone trying to pay off these umpires to get us a win. Yeah. Well, and it's work. It's that's, working. That's 4-0. True. I just realized because I've got my old phone without a SIM card here, right? <laughs> I don't have any Wi-Fi or like... um. Uh, I can't search. Oh, you don't have any access here. Take so, my phone, bro. Nah, I need it. I Take need my it, phone. You know me, man. I, I don't do any research. Just don't look, at, yeah. don't, don't look at my messages and we'll be fine. Nah, but I'm so tempted now, man. I'm so tempted. All right. So but, should we get started, bro? Yeah. AFL podcast here. Yeah. Um, what do we talk about? Uh, well, Dino, we've got nothing to say. I know. That's the thing is Dino <laughs> is, um, he's he's the rock of this pod, man. He, he leads he, us in. He will, he will be missed. How do you, where's the AFL website so I can look at the games at it, man? You've only got fan footy up. I that's can't. the only thing you need. Yeah, true. That is very true. Um, but Do you want to use this, bro? Yeah, no, that's, that's excellent. That's excellent. Man. I need that. I need that to, you know, get the uh, get the ball rolling, man. So gather round. Gather round. Did you like, did you like gather round? Gather round? No, nah, not really. It no, means no nothing to us if we're not there, right? Yeah. Well, the thing is, well, they're playing on grounds that are like a, a baseball pitch. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, windy. It's, win- it's windy. It's like, <laughs> it's just so, I don't know. It's a bit weird. But look, it started off like, you know, somewhat interesting like oh after the third quarter of the first game actually got a little bit interesting Adelaide you know, came Adelaide, back a little bit yeah yeah but other than that you know Adelaide versus Melbourne Melbourne did what they needed to do like, 100%. You know, look it's uh it's interesting contrast because Adelaide gets the opportunity to start gather round you know home team mm. last year gather round Adelaide versus Carlton right yeah and they absolutely demolished demolished mm. um uh the Blues Mm. And to end kind of the initial streak that Carlton had last year. Yeah. You contrast that to this year, they're zero and four and they've lost to Melbourne. Uh, stark stark contrast to last year's gather round. But mm. um I actually have some notes here with Adelaide and I wanted to go through some of their recruiting over the last couple of years. Okay, interesting, Be- yeah. I think you'll like these draft picks, right? Yeah. Because a lot of the talk about Adelaide is now where's their high end talent, you know? Yeah. So let's yeah. have a look. 2015, we'll go back to. That's mm. when Dangerfield left, right? Yeah. I'm just going to talk job. about yeah. some of their higher 
peaks that they've gone through over the years. Nothing too detailed. Yeah. Give, you know, if you, if you name me the year uh, and the what peak it was, I'll tell you who it was. Oh, 2015, peak yeah. 11. Peak 11. No, I don't know. Oh, wow, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going back a bit too far. No, um, uh, Peddler? No. No, he was more, he was Miller. more recent. Wayne, Wayne, Miller. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's, he's hasn't really been that... Dude he's had enough time to become a good player. Yeah, that's that's nine years now. That's nine years. It's yeah. 2024. That's nine years, man. You should be right by now. Still on the list, but he's not a um, he's he's not a, a very good player. I think no, it's okay, no. but the thing, the truth is, he's had a lot of injuries. Yeah, that is true. Anyway, is true. we'll call it mm-hmm. not a pass for now. Yeah, right? no, nah, that's that's yeah. okay. Jury's so out. Next one is 2016. Jordan Gallucci, pick 15. Yeah, no, nah, he's gone. Man. That, he's bro. gone. Yeah, small forward. Meh. 2017, they made the grand final. Mm-hmm. Okay. They got Bryce Gibbs from Carlton for two first round draft picks. Oh my god. That in hindsight is a big one. Yeah, that's a big that's yeah. What did he give him? Two, three good years, maybe? And ma- a good years is a is a stretch. Yeah, you good is a stretch. I don't think you yeah. even gave him good years, but they got mm. Darcy Fogarty for pick twelve, right? That's pretty good. That is that's very okay. good. Yeah. Now that it starts to get a lot worse. So mm. twenty eighteen, Chase Jones pick nine. Twenty eighteen is a super draft with Walsh and yeah, Butters and Rosie. Yeah. He's the only top ten draft pick that hasn't really shown anything. Mm. Yeah, okay. no, he's mid. They they seem to reach a lot with these high end picks, and you're gonna as you're gonna show us in a second right here. The next year was it pick six Macassey? Yes, that's right. But even in twenty eighteen they got McHenry for pick sixteen, who's not great. Yeah, he's just, Will Hamill's playing at pick thirty. Yeah, it's okay. They're all just high energy sort of work rate type. They're work dudes. rate players. Yeah, yeah, which you don't like. I don't know at that high end at that part of the draft when you already have Led and you know that time Sloan and Matt Crouch. You don't really need that. That makes know? sense, right? It does. Yeah. I don't know if whether it works. Anyway, twenty nineteen Fisher Macassie's retired. Pick yeah. six. Mm. Schoenberg pick twenty four, mm. and um, Josh War- Warrell. Josh Royal, he plays right now. He's, he's, he's not too bad a player, to be honest with you. Josh Royal plays. Will Hamill, I don't think, plays. I said yeah. no, I got that wrong. Yeah, yeah, 2020, no. Phil Thorpe, jury's out. Yeah, look, he might I, be okay. He, he could be good, but it's just the injuries, man. Like It's yeah. just a, it's, it's an issue. Pedler, pick 11. Pedler, that's the one, That's bro. bad, bro. He's going to be the whipping boy for them. 100%. Like, if they don't ever make it, which, you know, it's looking a little bit, you know, rough right now, a lot of criticism is going to go on to him, man. 100%. So. Braden Cook, 25, heard of him. Jared Berry, 28. <laughs> James yeah. Rowe, thirty-eight. James Rowe, yeah. Jimmy, Rowe, but Jimmy Rowe was mad, bro. I like Jimmy Rowe. But he was he, cool, but was he yeah. good? Probably not. But you know, hard work, hard work, man. He so play, play with edge. That's the trend. But really, how many names have I told you so far that you're actually happy with? Uh, Phil yeah. Thorpe, maybe. Yeah, Phil Thorpe. Yeah, no, nah, there's not much to it, man. All yeah. right, twenty twenty one. Dawson got traded in, not yeah. drafted, traded. Yeah, great. Shelly pick, pick six, gun. Yeah, Saligo pick thirty six. I think quite good. Yeah, no, he's he's. Yeah, he's very good. He's actually proved himself this year that he's a good He had a big clearance. game as well. Yeah, clearance player. He's good. 2022, Rankin traded. Yeah. Max good Michelini, pick, pick 17. Fine. Fantastic, yeah. Fine. Father, son, great pick. 2023, Dan Curden, Charlie Edwards, Oscar Ryan. We haven't seen any of them, right? Yeah. But we'll see. Hmm. Basically, what we're looking at is from 2015 to 2023, how many players have they drafted that are actually good? Rochelle. Rochelle, yeah, that's kind of it. That's it. Yeah. No, look, no, McElhaney is a gun. And McElhaney. McElhaney is a gun. Yeah. Saligo is solid, you know, but is he great? I that's don't know. That's three players, bro. Yeah, it's, the, it's been bad. That's why, they're, that's why they're in trouble, man. It's simple mm-hmm. as that. Yeah, that's a fair call. The thing I find interesting, and I found like there's some people talking on Twitter about, oh, the midfield isn't really quite as dynamic as it used to be. And they're blaming Matt Crouch. He's been their best player. He has been. He's yeah. been honestly. He's been so good. He picks up the ball and he's super clean with it. It's not his fault that they don't have run on the outside. No, because he's doing his job on. He's doing his job on the inside. I, I don't really understand the rhetoric that you know. It's his fault that all of a sudden that they, their midfield sucks. No, I think um, Matt Crouch, but he's an extractor, right? He's he's yeah. got a very clear role. Mm. So everyone else around him needs to compensate for the fact that he doesn't have a lot of run outside the ground. So. Yeah, that's true. But he's a good ball user though as well. So like I know he's slow, but he's got like he kicks it pretty well. He's handballs handballs might be one of the best in the league for handballs. That's true. You know? Um but yeah. yeah just low scoring in Adelaide. Same struggles mm. they've had all year. Mm. And um Melbourne we should say we haven't said anything about them. They've won four in a row. Yeah, no, they're they're excellent. So they're, good on we, them. Yeah, I know. We, we we barely had them in the eight <laughs> for yeah, our for our premiership. But you know what? That's it's the bounce back, and you know, what? like Petrarca and Gorn have been huge during this period. Mm. Oliver's still, you know, he's still fat at this part of he's the still season. Fat, he's yeah. still fat. But he's, 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 he's shredding. Building, he's shredding now. He's shredding. He's building into it. The thing I was impressed with as well was the heart shown from 
from Stephen May. Yeah, big time. He looked bad in the um. There goes our. There, there goes our. Goes our it is what it is. We're, 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 we're working out the kinks, as yeah. you can see. We've got two different like mic stands. Ah, it doesn't look good, does it? But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> should we close that? How do we get rid of that? Oh no, you keep talking while I see if I can fix it. Yeah, no, nah, fair enough. Look. Um, so yeah, no, Steve May, right? <laughs> he yeah goes. Um, oh, oh, there we go. Look at that. Bring that. Bring the mic. Yeah, bring that. Bring that mouse, man. Have it up. Yeah, there you go. Simple. The mouse will be the savior. S- simple fix, man. Maybe just if you can get, get it off the screen, though, that that look pretty cool. Oh. Um, but yeah, anyway, so Steve May, yeah, he gets kind of whacked in the first um contest or so. Might have been the first or second contest. Looked bad. He mm. looked like you know he was really um. Uh, laboring around but then finished the game strong he looked strong in every contest didn't back away from any you know um one-on-one so it's a huge it's huge for melbourne because at Mm -hmm. 1.2 weeks ago may was injured and lever was injured and you're thinking oh they're going to be exposed and it just didn't happen just didn't happen yeah no both lever played the next week and may took a week off and ready to go so yeah yeah they're flying good on them Mm. all right let's move on to brisbane north yeah Uh, with this game all right so Honestly, like what I will say is fatiguing as a North supporter, right? Fatiguing. Yep. Thank, thank God I was working that day because <laughs> I didn't watch. I, I watched maybe the first like quarter and then I'm like to my Brisbane Lions mate, I'm like, hey, bro, no spoilers. I'm watching it from the start. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> he just, he's sort of like, you know, I think he said something like, oh yeah, it's looking good. And then I'm like, all right, let's just see the score. What's going on? And we're getting smashed. I'm just like, you know what? No, not happening. I'm not watching it. I'm not Fair watching enough. it. I'm not putting myself through that. You know, I can look. Looking at you know stats, which is you know you know uh, it's not the best way to analyze, but look, Combin. That's what I've got. That's the only note I've got is Charlie Combin. Tell me about him. Charlie Combin, key like he's a, he was drafted as a forward. We've put him in the defense. We've sort of set him up to be that intercepting slash you know lockdown type player. He looked really good. He got I think it was thirteen intercepts on the day, um, and he's not afraid to you know to um, to kick the ball either. You know mm. which is good. You know he's not like one of those. Yeah, you know, was it as a frost from Hawthorne? You know, he's he, the famous, he, infamous yeah, one. He's the infamous, infamous one. Where he's, he's, if he's about to kick, everyone, you know, everyone shoots themselves. <laughs> you know, Combin's not quite like that. You know what I mean? So, between him, you know, um, and uh, hope Logue will come back soon. Hopefully, that'll fix some of our defensive issues because it's, it's the key weakness. Yeah, it is. It is. So, um, but the frustration for me as a North fan is the fact that the young guys like Sheasel is excellent, right? Mm. He's always standing up, getting the ball, using it well. I was saying this with uh, with um, Dino last week. Guys like Core, the experienced dudes, Luke McDonald, they just they don't have an they don't go mm-hmm. in, they don't make examples of themselves of being good. They make examples of them being bad. I don't know. It's like it's just yeah. it should you, be bad. your good your players are, are your first and second year players. Yeah, which that just should not. You yeah. can't win games if that's the case. You no. know, it's just it's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, with Brisbane. Lockie Neal was freaking everywhere. Yeah, he was everywhere. And look, he, they hadn't won a game, and they've they're, they're tasting blood against North. So yeah, true, true. So I guess we probably can't say too many great things about Brisbane because it was like you know, look, you, know. you guys made uh, Hipwood look good. That's that's bad. Yeah, no, that is bad. Especially <laughs> an ugly bloke like that to make him look good. It's very hard. So um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> we, the jury's out on Brisbane. I mean, they've they've been a, a way worse side than them. Yeah. So um, we'll see whether they are. They build into their season now that they've got the, the duck off the back. Yeah, you know, maybe the Bris Vegas stuff can sort of uh, <laughs> quiet down as well. As Do you have any any rumors to talk about with Bris Vegas? Not not that I can publicly um, disclose. That that message, not that's P, not that PG PG. Version. No, no, we can't <laughs> we can't talk about that. That is the one of the funniest things. Like, do you want to give some context to the? Oh, it's one of those. It's one of those like text message type things <laughs> where it's like a random random dude saying, "Hey man, don't tell anyone I sent you this." But this and this and this happened, and you know, there's always a message like this. There was a Clary one yeah. last year, you know, about him and Gorn and whatever. There was one of those. They, they, there's always this type of like, you know, chainmail rumor yeah, yeah. that R- gets sent. Rumor. Yeah, it gets sent around to like every, you know, <laughs> to everyone's mates. It's, it's hilarious. Um, Basically, they're just making fun of what uh, Brisbane got up to in Vegas, and they didn't look make it sound very pretty. So no, no, the battalion is um. Is what they ordered apparently. That's, yeah. that's as far as I'm going to go. Um, I, uh, but yeah, look, this next game right makes me feel so much better. Yeah. After we got smashed, and some, and it was John Levitt said it himself, right? One of our mates, you know, speak, speak, cheeky JL. He goes, um, so we lost by seventy points against a top four. Should not even a 
grand final side last year. Yeah. You know, we're a rebuilding club. Whereas Essendon lost to by 70 points to a team who um, went out in straight sets last year. Mm. And they're meant to be a team who recruited for, you know, for success. Yeah. So that makes me feel a lot better as a North fan. You know what I mean? And to see Essendon suffer like that. Look, Essendon, it's hard to work out where Essendon's at because they've, uh, they've beaten the Hawks and the Saints, mm. but they've lost to Port and Sydney. So it looks like they're nowhere near the top echelon of the teams, but no they're way. good enough to beat some of the lower end teams. Mm. Um, and it's kind of hard to know where Saints are at exactly. But really, Essendon just got slaughtered mm. by the trio, the superstar yeah. trio of Port Adelaide. Yeah, that, that midfield. That Man, I feel like all over social media, it's like, what's the best trio? Yeah. What's the be- They're a good they, trio, man. They are. They are. And they complement each other very well because yeah. it's like, I feel like Rosie and Butters have more of that outside capability, whereas Horn Francis proper up. He's burst. He's yeah, burst. He's, he's danger filled. Brute. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, the thing yeah. is, even Rosie and Butters have bursts as well. So, the individually, they're all super dangerous. Mm. And Horn Francis comes back this week, has his first 30 possession game. Mm. But he was monster. He had like 10 clearances. Um, but And Butters had a, had a good game as well. But Rosie, man. <laughs> that guy was taking the absolute piss with Essendon. Mm. Like I was watching that, and I was like, "Is this guy Gary Ablett?" Like he, <laughs> he, he was ridiculous. Like uh, the game, uh, who plays like that? If he played yeah, like that a couple of games in a row, it'd be like the greatest like three games you've ever seen. It was ridiculous. So pretty much the little Brownlow fancy. I don't know, man. Uh, look, he's getting the three votes for sure. He yeah. was dancing around people. He was taking the ball from like <laughs> just by himself, like it was a rugby game, just fifty mm. yards. It was. Pretty crazy performance. Yeah. So, and the un- the other one who's kind of under the radar. So he doesn't form part of the trio, mm. but he's a little cheeky fourth that they've got. Willem right? Drew. Willem Drew. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. He had to has to get his mention, man, because he's again in an under type dude who allows those out somewhat outside type dudes to flourish even more. Yeah, they didn't um, suffer without wines, that's for sure. No, no. Well, I'm sure he'll just come straight back in. He will. Yeah. And Horn Francis will probably go a bit more forward. Yeah. Um, which you know I think he should be able to do that pretty well, and he showed signs of that in the first game. That he could play a bit of forward as well. Yeah. That he played. So, yeah, no, was, fun times for them, man. It was good to see Georgie Artis come back after, I think it was an ACL, a long-term yeah. injury as well. So, mm. he adds to their depth in their forward line, which mm. is good. What do we make about Essendon just getting slaughtered? Good. Yeah. <laughs> we're <laughs> good. happy about it. Yeah, no, let's be fair, man. Like, we're, not, we're not really Essendon enjoyers. No, we're not. To be honest with you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think... Th- I, I don't know where the, where the issues are. Is it in, is it in the guts? Like they Zeret got smashed was, out of the midfield. Zero yeah. worked hard. But yeah, he's the rest. Such, he's such a warrior, man. Mm. Like you know, the, he's got that warrior mentality. But then it's just like <laughs> Parish, Setterfield. Yeah, you know, they had Perkins, bad games. Yeah, they they had bad games. They, they didn't you know lift up with him. So yeah, yeah. Essendon until they prove themselves, we're not going to believe that they're a threat. Mm. Um, but to get disgraced like that, it's pretty poor. That is, that is. You can be beaten by a better team, but 70 points is a thrashing. Shocking. So, you know, Dino would be very happy with this one as well. Yeah, I think he would have loved this one. He would have loved to speak about this game, but, you know, uh, I think the thing is like, it's, he's probably two least favorite teams, Port and Essendon. Yeah. Together, you know, he hates Ken Hinckley and he hates, not many not. people like Essendon. Yeah, true, And not many true. people like Port either, so. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. They, they stole a number one pick from a team who really needed a number one pick. But, you know. You guys yeah. will be fine, man. You've got enough picks now. Yeah, true. No, true. All right, that's let's true. go to West Coast and Sydney. West Coast and Sydney. So, look, that, that, hey, shout out to West Coast, Shout man. out to West Coast, man. Second quarter, they actually. They were look, leading at half time, man. Yeah, exactly, man. That, that second quarter, they had a little bit of a wind advantage. They were huge, man. Yeah. Harley Reid's first goal as well was. That was mad. That's yeah. sh- I feel like that sort of um, encapsulates what he can provide a team. Just you know, that a player who just looks like he's a level above everyone else mm. already. You know, so that's great. He's had a like we're talking about the fourth his fourth game up, right? but this is mm. probably the first game where he's really shown like mm. what he can do. Yeah, he announced himself. He announced this himself like he's took. He's been alright, but mm. this game he was actually quite dominant. Broke yeah. how many? Tackles did he break? Uh, he kicked goals. He was bursting through the middle, mm. and now all the commentators like Harley Reid. Oh, he's already their best player. He's already their best player. He's <laughs> Look, not. I think that's disrespectful. He's not, but he's he's their third best player. He's, he's their third. Yo McGovern. That's it. That's it. But the thing Reed. is, Oscar Allen and Oscar. Are you Allen. gonna tell? Oh, no, nah, I think Oscar Allen's, but it's key forward. Right, we'll put him and fourth, man. Put the yeah. fourth game of fourth on their list. That's pretty good, man. And then by next game, he'll probably be third. Yeah, yeah. He'll keep, he'll keep <laughs> he kicks one more goal. He's better than Oscar Allen. That's it. That's it, man. So uh, that was. I mean, looking at that game. Before mm-hmm. it started, you're like, why would I even watch this game? Like, yeah. what's the point? Yeah. But turns out that West Coast put an effort for once. I think Sydney mm-hmm. was a bit champagne football. 
they try. I think they thought they were just going to smash West Coast and they could do whatever they want. And yeah. they got caught out a bit by playing a bit too fancy. Mm. But they were never going to lose that game. Nah, nah. That, and it, yeah, we didn't. We wouldn't have expected it. And yeah, no. Nah. It would have been the biggest upset ever. Yeah. But uh, Heaney, best player in the comp. Whoa. I reckon, man. That's you know he what? is the best player in the comp at the moment. That's you know at the moment. At the moment. Form wise, he's he's the like yeah he's he's that guy. Um, and now they've. They've given a game to uh, Taylor Adams as well, mm. just to you know. He fit him well. More. Yeah, he he was fine, man. Just more more help for Heaney, you know, so Heaney yeah. doesn't have to do all that grunt work on his own. But he's so clean as a player. Yeah. What I love like, about players like him is he doesn't fumble. Mm. When he gets the ball, he kicks it to the person he wants to kick it to. Yeah, he, and he's just running so hard at the moment that he's mm. midfield and he's forward. He kicks goals. It's crazy. It's great to watch a player that is just at the top of his game, mm. and it's good to watch football where. The players intend to do something and they actually do it. So that's cool. Mm. But yeah, there we go. That's I think that's pretty much summed up the game pretty well. Yeah, but that's enough West Coast talk, man. Exactly. Um, oh. And on to the next one. So this is the game where you, you got a little bit of explaining to do, mate. I don't know who you paid. <laughs> I don't know who you paid, but Jordan Clark's very upset. Yeah, Jordan so, Clark. Yeah, clearly. Uh, so is the umpire. Yeah, true, true. So he, he, said, he said, I'm an idiot. He said, I'm an idiot. Is there been any talk about what, what actually happened? What what actual the oh, umpire? The quote I saw was F an idiot, right? Oh, really? But I don't know in what context that was. Did he, Did Jordan Clark just uh, idiot to himself? Let's say did... let's say Jordan Clark said that to the umpire. Yeah. Is it justified to pay a free kick? I don't know, man. I think it's that, hard. To, it's hard. Nah, Look, the concept. Have a spoonful of cement, bro, and just, you know, just move on. <laughs> hard up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm a bit like, I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's um, start from the start. Let me go through my thoughts. Yeah, no, I'll ramble a little bit, and you yeah, keep let's, me. Let's you, you keep me in check. So, no. first of all, credit to Freo. That's cap. No, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. No, because no. <laughs> I've been talking shit about Freo for ages. So yeah. I'm gonna say, look, good on Freo, man. Now they don't play a very attractive style of footy. No, it's really. actually disgusting to watch, <laughs> but they control the pace of the game, right? And they're very strong defensively. The defense is really strong. Their midfield, they smacked us. Yeah. They just can't score, man. So even though they had, I'd say, control of the game for the majority of the game, they're only up by like six points on average throughout the game. So the whole talk of Frio stealing the game, I mean, it's not like they were up by 30 points or anything like that. They think Carlton stealing the game. Yeah, Carlton yeah. stealing the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Frio's ability to defend is good, they're a bit, mm. but they play this chip mark game where they just keep it off you for the yeah. whole time so that you can't pressure them. But they, just, they can't score. And this has been a problem for them for a couple of years, I feel like. So that's mm. the area of improvement for them. You have to be able to put on scoreboard pressure when you're in charge and when you're dominating the midfield possession. They couldn't do that. Carlton is a team that has become very mature. Yeah. And they're winning all the close games. That's a hallmark of a good team is to be able to win a game, yeah. even if you're not the best. Like mm. the Hawks used to do that back in the day. They used to find a way to win a game. That's true. That's when, true. That, when, they won grand finals like that, let's be fair. That's right. So This thing keeps... This keeps Falling a little bit. Keep man. sagging, man. Yeah. I, I, the new tech. Sagging, sagging's no good, man. Sagging's no good. Yeah, you've got to keep one. it erect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so as I was saying, look, it, I'm proud of Carlton for being able to keep into that game. But mm. also, they're the type of team that can stra- stra- scrap mm. and keep it competitive. So I wasn't too nervous or stressed about Carlton losing this game Yeah. because I thought, let's just see what happens in the final quarter. I've got faith in this team. Um, now, when we go to the umpire decision, Three is up. Mm. There's a minute left, and there's a contest in the forward fifty. And Luke Jackson taps it away from the contest to where Carlton has numbers. Yeah, John. Lo- uh, so uh, Longmire, right? Yeah. He he uh, actually criticised that in mm. his post game conference. Yeah, yeah, right? he did too. Mm. And Hewitt gets the clearance, kicks it to Cottrell. Cottrell standing in front. Cottrell kicks the goal. Mm. Everyone says it's touched. Now, it was touched, no doubt about it. Mm. But was it touched enough for the like? I don't think it's that bad of a decision. I know I'm a Carlton supporter, but I don't think it's that bad of a decision, man. Like, <laughs> you when you're kicking that ball, so what, do you think the umpire is really going to pay that in the last minute? But the thing is, that we have the what's it called? Um, what's the, what's our review system called? Yeah, but the score re- review. Yeah, score review. It's got score review for a reason. The score review is for goals, bro. It's not for touch possession. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. They can't. Everyone's saying review. There's no review. No, that's true. That is true. 
What's that beeping, bro? I don't know. <laughs> We're bro, like a haunted place, bro. Yeah, I know, man. So this, yeah, no, shout out to Georgie for, you know, um, this is actually his workplace <laughs> and he's, he's, he's shouted us his workplace, but there's this beeping going on. Should, should we do something about the beeping, man? Yeah, I reckon we deal with the beeping because it's, it's right. quite distracting. You keep talking about the Carlton Yeah, game. also, can you check on the, on the screen there, right? Well, does, is there a timer on it or not? Like where it says, you know, there's this amount of time to go. Is it recording? No, all good, all good. Now that means we've got plenty of uh, uh, battery, which not battery. Battery is not the word I'm looking for. Um, space, space, because we need space to record. It's like film. We don't want to waste all our film. But anyway, that's this is another game that you know um, I wasn't able to watch because of work, and I just see you know the uh, the result, <laughs> you know, um, and I see the controversy. But look, um, because George is away, I can talk about Supercoach. I kept five, right? I kept five. You know, a lot of people traded him out, but like, I'm like, you know what, man? You know, I have faith. He's got the role. Bro, anyway. I can't leave for two seconds and then you're still talking about <laughs> <laughs> Supercoach. I, I can't help it. I can't help it. Man, I swear you went around doing the beeping and then this thing went We've got some up. kinks to work out, bro. Oh, man. This is, uh, this is so ghetto. Uh, but yeah, no, we'll, we'll figure it out slowly, slowly. Um, Do you think that the umpire, we talked about criticizing of umpires mm-hmm. in previous weeks and we said, if it's, if you're not 100 percent sure, just let it play. Yeah, that's what they did, man. That's fair. You know what? That's that's a good argument. I right just there. don't. I don't. I get how free are, are frustrated 100, mm. percent but I just don't think that that was that bad of a call because that happens every game where there's a little slither of a touch. What about when you got a pack mark and like mm. three people punch it, but the other guy marks it and they call it a mark? It happens all the time. That's fair. And there's so many umpire decisions that go this or that throughout the game. You're always going to look at the ones that are at the end of the game. But yeah, they get, they go under the microscope. 100%. But it like is. there was one in the first quarter where Cripps should have got a shot at goal mm. because it was out on the full for the freer player. It was clearly out on the full, but the umpires didn't know. And you, uh, while they're deciding on it, you could see on the replay that it was out on the full. Yeah, and they, and they didn't. That's like the game. Actually, that's like against North versus Freer when the ball hit the behind post. Yeah. And it hit the behind post and then, you know, went went out. And it should have been a, on the full, but we didn't get that either. That's right. So Freer, you know what? You get your luck as well. So, you know what? Get stuffed. Look, get I, stuffed. I'm over Freer it. Freer have been at the hands of some bad Carlton defeats. The Jack mm-hmm. Nunes goal after the siren. Mark Murphy with 30 seconds left. Like, they've <laughs> copped it. They must hate Carlton, right? I get it. Yeah. But I just, the whole robbed argument, I don't like. Because Frio, unfortunately, have to look at the fact that there was a key contest that you guys lost. We got the clearance and our mm. player was playing in front. Now, on to the, the descent rule, right? Mm. My opinion on, on descent is, it, I think it's a stupid rule. But it is a rule, right? So yeah. the umpire still has the ability to call it. As a... Um, a team that's maturing, you've got to learn to be able to handle the ups and downs of the game, right? Yeah. I'm not saying it's easy, but you've got to be able yeah. to learn how to handle it and just move on. Carlton has become really good at that. They're quite mature, and I think it's like a coaching thing. Voss keeps him in check to just be able to play, all right, what's happening next? What can we do next? If Frio didn't give the descent rule, they had 40 seconds to kick another goal to get in front. Mm. not saying that would happen, but it's a possibility. They shot themselves in the foot by arguing. Now, Carlton as a team doesn't give away a lot of 50-meter penalties, right? Mm. If you give away a 50-meter penalty, most not all the time, but a lot of the time, it's in the player's control, right? You can't control giving away free kicks all the time, but you can control how you react to them and whether you give a 50. That's true. Sometimes, not always. Yeah. Like if it's stand and Mm. you accidentally don't stand or whatever. But North Melbourne gave a lot of of, uh, uh, 50-meter penalties against Carlton. Richmond did and Freo did. That's, that's interesting. What I'm it. saying is these teams haven't, mm. they need to learn to mature and handle the pressure. Carlton. <laughs> I, lo- I love this. I was like, like, so we're Carlton, we're a mature side. What I'm saying. And you, I'll you get, little kids need to grow up. I'll <laughs> that's, get, the, that's the vibe I'm getting. I what, like it. what I'm saying is Carlton has been through so many of those shitty defeats. Yeah. And I'm reflecting on the last couple of years from them. And I reckon mm. that it's they've Alton. actually learned. Yeah. And I've compared it to Freo, compared it to some of these other teams we've just versed, and I've kind of realized, shit, I feel like we've actually really matured in that area. Mm. It's just an observation because I guarantee you if the other roles were reversed, Carlton would not have given the descent there. I guarantee it. Well, there you go. That's, that's, a, that's a very different perspective, you know, and I, I like that, to be honest with you. It's, it's beyond the, you know, yeah, we got the four points. It's, you know, there's more to it. At the end know? of the day, right, it's a, it's a shit loss for Freo. They'd mm. feel hard done by, I get it, but you've got to find a way to learn from that and move mm. on. They've played a tough brand of footy. They've got to learn to score more, but they're much better than I thought they would be. Mm. And they could even be a finals chance this year. So I th- Yeah, I think, mate, no doubt they're a finals chance, to be yeah. honest with you. I think they're better than a lot of those middle-range middle teams. Middle-range teams, yeah. You know, that, you know, the Essendons and the Saints and the 
Richmond, maybe they're not quite at that point. Yeah. Um, are they better than Gold Coast? I, don't know. I guess we'll see. I know they're, they're, it's they're, they're kind of close. I feel like they're at that type of range. Mm. So yeah, um, yeah. I, I, that's maybe enough talk about it. But yeah. um, that's mm. just my opinion on some of those final moments. Mm. As I say, this this day was it the Saturday night. A couple couple big games, a couple close ones, man. Mm. Not nail biters, right? Um, Bulldogs versus Geelong. The oldies are Geelong, man. They're still they're Bro, still they're, going hard. They're undefeated. That's that's crazy. That's crazy. Man. That's man. crazy. And what a bounce back. Th- yeah, and I think the thing with them and. I've got to give credit because I always used to think to myself, man, I hate how Geelong gets all these dudes. They got Cameron, they got Dangerfield, they got Higgins, and they keep recruiting these dudes. Give them a nice little house next to the beach, and you know, give them you know, <laughs> maybe some money on the side. I don't know that that used to piss me off, right? But now I, I, you look at the whole side, right, and you look at the type of players that they've gotten. You know, they poach. They have poached a lot of dudes. They've poached Bruin and, and Henry, and Henry's excellent, right? Mm. They've poached a couple of dudes, right? Um, but you look at dudes like close, you look at dudes like um, say like a Stewart, even like he was a later pick and a mature age recruit. They've got a lot of dudes who aren't exactly, you know, these um, first round, second round. They've got a lot of third rounders and rookie type do- type yeah. guys that are just doing their job. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And they've, they've got a nice little team um, uh, chemistry going and some, you know, good Geelong culture. Geelong plays as a team, man. They don't, it's 100%. very rare that they've got like a superstar that like, Gets forty possessions. Mm, yeah, like I'm sure, I mean, Cameron. To... Cameron's a superstar. He, mm. he had a big game. Um, mm. Jack Bowes kicked two goals, which is kind of random. Yeah, that that is random to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, do like you know the the <laughs> the commentators love Dempsey, man. They love they, Dempsey. He's a good good young player. Yeah, man. That's that's a surprising. You know, like they're getting a lot of value out of him on the wing and his energy. Yeah, you know, he's gonna take the best mark one day. <laughs> that's that's the that's way BT, it is it? That's it, mate. He's he's electric. You know. Um, yeah, but there, yeah, you know, shout out to him. I think. Um, yeah, even game. Two teams who are going to be around the same sort of actually. No, I maybe think not. No, Geelong might be. I think they're they, better than Dogs, man. Do you reckon they're gonna be top four this year, man? Look, it's pretty crazy, but maybe. They haven't lost a game. They just beat a good a good team in mm. in um Bulldogs. But mm. like you contrast the fact that like Cats play evenly as a team with the yeah. dogs. Look at look at Libba's game, right? Thirty five possessions, twenty eight <laughs> contested, nineteen clearances, nine tackles and a goal. And they lost. He must feel and, so stiff. Man. And they he had like that's so like bright. the most ridiculous game you've ever seen. And Bont had a pretty crazy game as well, mm. and they lost. So like they've they've taken advantage of the fact that Cats don't have Guthrie and Dangerfield in the midfield. Mm. They're winning the ball, but they didn't win the game. They didn't capitalize, no. So um, they had a lot of the play in the final quarter as well, and they couldn't find a way to win it. It was close, but mm. at the end, they if you don't get the four points, you don't get the four points, right? That's it. That's it. Um, Got to say, one of the winners of the draft this year, right? Not just the team, but the dude himself, Riley Sanders, mm. right? How he must be so happy that he's come into this this midfield group, right? We're talking. There's guns in this midfield group, there so is. he can just express himself and do what he wants and play his game. They've even had. They've got McRae as the That's sub. That's what I was gonna say. What's McRae doing, bro? McRae as the sub. You got him in draft. You must be fuming, right? I'm fuming. So they've got Sanders coming in and just you know they've they've just they roll out the red carpet for him, man. And he's doing great. He's, he's a solid player, man. He's what do you think they do with McRae? Like, is his career over? Can't be over, man. He's he, a gun. He needs to be traded, man. Yeah. He's not gonna play him. I don't know. Look, a club that would need him. Look, I take him. I take him in North. Bro. Oh, we'd you guys would. Mate, we'd yeah. love him, McRae, mate. We'd love because he's inside outside as well. He's man. like a uh, a Matt Crouch. Yep, yeah, I agree. I agree. A dude who's like you know, he's just gonna win the hardball. Yeah, he wins a hardball, but I think he's more than that though, because I feel like he's got that more outside element to his game. Whether that's his own choice or whether he's been forced to but yeah. he can he's a good yeah. kick as well yeah he, he is. chucks it on the left he's great so it's that's a bit him. of a fall from grace man but mm. I don't know is he just going to be on the sidelines all year they obviously and they have mm. got Bailey Smith as well to come back yeah uh, someone's got to go someone's yeah. got to make way maybe because Bailey you Smith can't oh I, look I, I, isn't that the rumor is, is he going to be traded Collingwood or something I know he's mates with Nick Dacos they did the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu <laughs> classes together and stuff that's probably why he got injured but uh, I don't know. Um, hey, you know, since there's been all these rumors about like, you know, laid outs, right? Do you reckon there's something in it with Bailey Smith a little bit like, oh, he's injured? He's going to have to miss a year because of injury? Is it really injury? 
<laughs> well, this is a conspiracy. Yeah, I oh, know we're getting conspiracy deep, enjoyers now. Yeah, this is. Tell this, me about this is off. Tell me about nine eleven, bro. What's that? Tell me about nine eleven. Tell me about Bohemian Grove. Let's go. So it was all Bailey Smith, right? That's so crazy. He, he started it. No. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know, man. I don't know. You heard it here. Probably not first. I don't know where I read that. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's look good problems to have for them, but but they're not winning though. So yeah, true, true. I don't rate um, the dogs, man. I've said it. I don't like Bevo as a coach either. So mm. we'll see I, what happens with them. Mm. Yeah, next game was fun. It was fun. No, I, I, love, I love look look because this is a game that I could actually watch because I had you know, I had the day off today. I was able to actually watch it. Um, Gold Coast versus Giants, man. That was like that. The AFL must be licking their lips. That Finally, they've got them both in form. Both. I know their their lists are in great positions, mm. and they're going to be finals type teams for the next probably four or five years maybe maybe more yeah I um, agree. especially Gold Coast man they, they just unveiled three new deb- yeah. debutons yeah Reed looked fine yeah Graham was solid in the midfield five or six Closey was crazy who's man. this Closey guy Closey bro? from Werribee mature I think he's like tw- 21 two, yeah 21 22 like young guy yeah m- but still mature age recruit he was excellent man yeah he was so good kicked his first goal mm. you know oh, man Jed they, Walter game too as well so he's basically a, a, rec- uh, a first gamer yeah so all these dudes with their first goal like you know man they, they just keep finding more dudes which you know i'll be honest they've been they've had a lot of handouts from the afl more than north right i'm not mm. going to take this you know their their um academy system is op mm. right op academy and also um they got op picks when they got anderson and Raul together right that was yeah. crazy but you know I'm still going to enjoy it, to be honest with you. Like, I don't really care. I'm just going to enjoy it for what it is. It's a fun team to watch. Midfield group is crazy. Yeah. Um, Wits um, helped even out the battle a little bit because, what was it, last week? Yeah, Moyle, they got smashed. Yeah, Moyle couldn't really hold his own, to be honest with you. Um, But yeah, it was good. I mean, but at the end of the day, right, with the Giants winning, I think they just had too much power at the end. Yeah. Too much class. Yeah, well, look, the way I see it is the Giants have been this good a team for like two or three years, mm. right? Gold Coast... Are this good a team now? Yeah, you know they just they don't know how to close out games and really, um, yeah, and yeah, just they don't know how to manage games and to you know be at that bit more clinical. But it's gonna come like, yeah. very quickly, man. I wouldn't be upset if I was a Gold Coast fan of that loss at all. No, no, man, no. And I was gonna say shout out like Ben King, bro. I think he's better than Max, man. He, I think he is. Yeah, he's yeah. so good, man. He's such a gun. And even um, Roses, solid dude. He's not bad, Roses. Man, like shout out, like shout out to Malcolm. Shout out to Malcolm. Malcolm in the middle, he's great. Like, um, yeah, they just every line is just so stacked. What do you think of Flanders off the half back? It was great. It was great for Supercoach. Like he he kept getting in. He still got 120 or something. Um, yeah, no, I think he, I thought he looked good, and I feel like the commentators they counted every disposal that he had. Oh, that's 24 now. That's 25 now. <laughs> Flanders again off half back. That's his twenty sixth disposal. Every time he got the ball, they yeah. they <laughs> had to note the amount of disposals that he had. Um, and yeah, well, he thinks he's a good user, man. He is actually he's, a good user. Yeah, he's, he's not a hack. Nah, he's dangerous, man. So, um, yeah, good move. I think it just allows them to get. It allowed them to give uh, Graham a go, right? Mm. And he's he was he was very solid. Yeah, man. yeah he was very industrious. You know, in another type player. Mm. Um. I mean, Raul does so much contested work as well. Like he was, oh, yeah. went up against Green, and I think he beat Green today. He did. And Green's he, Green's no, the dude. He's, uh, Green uh, to this point was the dude. This game wasn't as good as his usual game. No, he had, obviously had his great moments, but it wasn't like that clinical game no. that we've you know come to expect from him. Raul's just the, he's just an animal. He's, man. A, he's a monster. Like I swear, he got that facial hair, and all of a sudden he's just like the aggression just has just. He's Samson. He better not like shave his hair or something like that. No. If he no. goes bold chera on us, we've got big problems. Oh, oh, <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine. He, he just wouldn't have the same intensity if he no, went no bold chera. Or maybe it'd be worse. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, maybe even more aggressive, you know. Maybe it was like <laughs> some skinhead type, you know, just aggression, you know. Just yeah. trying to kill people out get, on the ground. Get some like, fa- like face painting or something like that. Some, some claws. <laughs> face painting. Some claws. Um, some Mike Tyson claws or something. Shaves the eyebrow. That's one of those ones. Gets yeah. a, can you imagine him with the fade and the buzz cut? No. That, neither. <laughs> neither. <laughs> That'd be scary, bro. He's too much of a good kid for it. But yeah, no, nah, he's, yeah. he's a monster. So mm, look, yeah. it, was, it was a fun game to watch. GWS just too good at this point in time to mm. um, k- kicked away. But good contest. Mm. Tigers and Saints. Tigers and Saints, man. So... That game was like, uh, it was all Richmond, man, in that first yeah. first half. We'll first say. Half, they yeah. jumped them, you know. The team, St. Kilda, that are meant to be, oh, the speedy, speedy team. 
they couldn't handle Richmond's speed yeah. and their pressure. So as soon as they would get the ball and they would hunt down St. Kilda, they were just off, right? Yeah. They were using St. Kilda's plan kind of against them. Um, but by the time the second half came around, the third quarter, the premiership quarter, yeah. St. Kilda, they, they did their thing, man. Um, I think it was just, yeah, their, their leaders stood up in this game, you know, very cliche, but, you know, Jack Steele and Marshall were huge, yeah. especially from the second half onwards. Yeah, I think Jack Sinclair had a good game as well. Like, he's come back from injury. Mm. Um, uh, the Saints just ran over the top of him. And it yeah. kind of, like, if Tigers won this game, it'd be crazy. Because yeah. they just beat Sydney. And they've got mm. a lot of injuries. No Bolton, no Lynch, plus all the rest. Mm. So, uh, to get within six or seven points, I think is a, a pretty good effort. Almost a blight on St. Kilda, to be honest with you. Mm. Um, I think one of the challenges that Tigers have is they only had, like, four or five individual goal kickers. Like, Shea mm. Bolton kicked four goals, right? And a lot yeah. of them were really high-skilled goals. The Saints just had, had way more spread. Only Higgins kicked more than one goal. So I think they're relying mm. heavily on just a couple of players, whereas the Saints have more spread, and it just allows... You, you just can't rely on one player to kind of make all the goals happen, especially mm. a small. Yeah, not true, man. But he's, his game was crazy. Yeah, he's man, a freak. He's, he's a freak. That, that, I, was thinking that, I was thinking of bringing him in Supercoast super this week, and I just didn't. He's too Didn't good. have the guts, man. Didn't have the, you know, the balls, but... um. I gotta say, LaFell, like I've we've had a few games to sort of watch what he does, right? I love that this dude competes and in the first quarter he picks up the ball, shrugs off I swear he shrugged off like two people. <laughs> he he literally thought it was rugby. He had like little he had little flashbacks. <laughs> Apparently it was a Melbourne Storm youth player or really? something like that. So part of their um academy system. I don't know how rugby works. But man, he's a solid player, man. You you, you take that on the list, you know. And they yeah. seem to trust him. They go to him, mm. you know. They're willing to, you know, go to him to make a contest so well, they need to rely on their young players now like they need them to grow so they're going to play them all year and yeah. we're going to be able to find out whether they're, they're talented or not like yeah. I think Morris Rowley's kind of taking a bit of a step forward he kicked two definitely goals as well. I swear Dino shit talked to him like I don't know if it was last week or the week before he was he, the, the pressure of that he dude, puts pressure man insane man mm. it was insane so I think there's you know there's something there for Richmond, man. Like, I think you would have been a little bit concerned after the first game, the loss, and you'd yeah. be like, oh, no, where's this going to go? But Adam Uze is, um, he's really, he's picked up. He's, he's got picked, him competing. Yeah, exactly. I feel like he's he's picked up where, you know, where they sort of left off, you know, maybe not last year, but the year before that, you know what I mean? Just high intensity football. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, no, nah, good on them. Um. And now onto a, a, a close one in the end. Tell me, tell me the score. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but, um, so basically, we started recording this, you know, at about half time. Oh wow, five S points! Yeah, I, I don't know how we're gonna. Is do it finished? It. Yeah, seventy-seven to seventy-two. I don't know how we're gonna really. Um, so what know. happened is when we started, like uh, Collingwood was, was dominating Hawks, mm. but you could see that they were starting to kick back, and so they've stormed home. Yeah. So basically, in the third quarter, it was still about a twenty-five point. It was almost a forty-point lead at one point for midway through the third against, um, you know, Hawks. to Collingwood. And then Hawthorne just, they just fought tooth and nail to bring it back. They never hit the lead though, but they got it close, man. They got it very close. How many goals did Hardwick kick? Because he had three when I last checked. Four. He had four. Blake um, Hardwick, the, the four with, goal kicker. Four, that's got to be the most he's ever kicked. Yeah, three to Darcy Moore, two to Ginevan. It's almost like the, Hawk, the Hawks lads came out to play so they can try to get a, yeah. a win for Ginevan. The Ginevan Cup. Yeah, the Ginevan Cup. I think, yeah, he was probably hard done by Ginevan getting um traded because he's been... I thought he was good. Yeah. Maybe it was a culture thing, I don't know. But he's yeah. been good since he comes to the Hawks. Yeah, he's played with a chip on his shoulder, you know what I mean? Um, You know, looks like, oh, man, Carl Amor, 26 kicks, man. Jeez. They got the ball in his hands quite a lot. Um, but, yeah, we, I, I don't know how we're going to really analyze this we game. Can't, that we we can't, watch. but other than the fact that um, go the Hawks for at least making it a contest. Yeah. no, I don't trust Collingwood, man. I don't trust them. Yeah, that's fair enough, man. Like, I think, man, this, this, shout out to Hawthorne, but at the same time, this wrecked our plans of just talking about how good Collingwood is on, you know, Collingwood back to business. This would have been a lot easier if it's they not, just It's got, not Collingwood back to business at all. It's not. It's not. Now we have to now we have to go back and watch it and analyze and see what's going on here, man. We'll give you an update next week. Yeah, no. We'll, prob, probs now. We'll, <laughs> <laughs> probs now. We'll forget about at it. At the end honest. of the day, right, they've got the four points. They're now 2-2. Two, two. Mm. So they've got their season back on track mm. um, and they can build into it. But yeah, I'm not convinced that they're playing the best football. And mm -hmm. um, and I, I think Hawthorne, uh, they're there. They're there at the contest and, yeah. you know, their willingness to push the ball forward shows that they're, you know, they're going to push even the good teams. Have they won a game, Hawthorne? No. 
Yeah. That's rough though because they've played some good football. Yeah. No, they have. They have. So the the only teams that haven't had a win at this point is so Hawthorne, North, West Coast, and Adelaide. That's the bottom four, baby. That's the bottom four. Adelaide, what, you're in Adelaide's bottom four? Yeah. <laughs> Bro, they're going to go 0-5 next week. They're versus Carlton. You don't come back from that. But bottom four though? I don't think they're going to be bottom four. I think they're going to start Who, getting... Who's Richmond, than... Richmond's above them. Essendon's a, you know, above Richmond's that. Richmond's better than them. Man. They're, they're playing hard and eventually they're going to get some recruits back. Hopefully they can settle their injuries. They'll be competitive the rest of the year. They're mature. That's fair. That's fair, but... That, I just, it just feels so weird. We thought Adelaide would be top. Right? Yeah, it's crazy fall from gross, man. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, but yeah, there you go. Man. That's gonna, the round. That, that is the round. We'll do some tipping. We'll, yeah, we'll start doing some, you know. These are the, uh, so this is round five tips brought, brought to you by Stemcon. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's have a look here. So Melbourne versus Brisbane. This is at the MCG on a Thursday. Um, I, I, I think it's... Um, I think I'd like to go honest. Melbourne. Yeah, I, I would, I'd like to go Melbourne as well. I'd like to go Melbourne. See, I think at this point, we're going to have to get Dino's tips in advance so we can do the tiebreaker. Yeah, yeah, Whereas enough. now we're going to have to agree. Um, Let's just agree, bro. Yeah. and Or maybe like we've we'll, we'll got to organize a phone call and just to get him. <laughs> Not get again. <laughs> that was, that was, bro, that was so fun on the pod. <laughs> having, having a call in. That was hilarious. Um, all right, next one is Bulldogs versus Essendon at Marvel Stadium on the Oh, Friday that's night. a tough one to pick, actually. That is, but I, I don't think it's that tough. I think Western Bulldogs, they showed that they're able to compete against a good team in Geelong. Essendon are just, they're, they're crap. They are not as good as the Dogs, I don't think yeah. I say. Yeah, yeah. happy with that? Let's yeah, go Dogs. But no. Essendon, I wouldn't be surprised if Essendon wins. Surpri- that's fair. Surprises yeah. us and then like, loses to a shit team the week after. Fair enough, fair enough. GWS versus the Saints. Uh, Monica Oval in Canberra, actually. Giants, Giants. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's a come that's on, man. A pretty, pretty easy one there, to be honest with you. Um, next one. This is the one we've already tipped. This one because you said that uh, Carlton are going to beat Adelaide. So Adelaide hasn't been the top eight team traveling for like three years. It's not going to happen. Or four years, man. It ain't going to happen. This Look, week, there's pressure on them, but there, there was pressure this week. Mm. I think they'll come out and compete, but they're not mm. a Marvel Stadium team. Nah, nah. It's, come it's, on, man. It's not. Nah. Look, the way the way you guys put that pressure on and just, you know, how mature you guys They're are. They're going to be sloppy. You guys aren't going to give one any descent kicks. No, no descent, descent free. No, no descent. descent free kicks. You guys are well-mannered boys, you know bro, what I mean? we're not giving away 50 meter free yeah, kicks. Yeah, right? you see, like, you've you seen, like, they've got no crazy haircuts on the team, you know what I mean? They're all nice and, you know, you can set your watch to those haircuts, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> next one is uh, Gold Coast versus Hawthorne uh, at People's First Stadium. No, oh, People's Gold First. Coast, People's First, right. I think the Suns will bounce back. Yeah, I don't have any issues with that one. This game is an interesting one, but so Port versus Frio at Port. And I think with the intensity, of, I, I think you go Port, man. Yeah, with the, the way they played against Essendon, you can't really see them slowing down. But if any team is going to slow them down, it's the slow down team, you know. Yeah. Um, Frio, the purple slow down team. Next one, Geelong versus North. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the Cats at JMHB. And what's with our draw? Why when are you first? When are you? When's your first easy match? We don't. Uh, the next week, I think it's Hawthorne. Oh, okay, that's but your that's grand not, final. That's your yeah, grand that final. That is our grand final. We we need to win that or no wins. Um, and then last game of the round is West Coast versus Richmond at Optus Stadium. That's a fun one. That is a fun that game. Actually, that is a fun one. Yeah, look, uh, we're, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go Richmond. We have to. Right? Yeah, we've got to go Richmond. We're gonna go Richmond, but look, let's go. Let's go West Coast, baby. No, we can't. Oh, no, <laughs> we can't. We can't do it. That, this is little. their time to win a game, West Coast. Yeah, you're right. No, this is their opportunity. If you can, yeah. you know. How crazy would it be if West Coast wins before North? Not that crazy. No, I don't think it's overly crazy, but I'd be very upset. Yeah. Like, that would probably, that would ruin my week if West Coast won and we hadn't, if and we don't beat Geelong at, at GMHBA. Yeah. That would kill me. I don't think you'll be in Geelong at GMHBA. Nah, props not. Nah. Props not, nah, man. But, and you got the buyers, which is... Uh, Collingwood and Sydney. So uh, two fun teams out of the running for this week. Um, and then the buys are done after this, right? No. There's one more week of buys. Melbourne and someone else. What was it? Melbourne and Richmond. The Melbourne legacy Richmond. of round zero. It just hasn't been good, man. It hasn't been good, bro. No. Like, it's just, it's annoying. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know what it is. I feel like just I hear that there's a less one less game, but I just go, Ugh. Why you have you got buys, man? Just let the teams play, because we can't actually even assess the ladder till after round seven. That's true. That's true. There's teams with extra games, and, you know, it's not quite. You It'd know. be great to kind of do a bit of analysis of, like, well, where have we started? Where are we at? Who are the teams that are winning? Who's not? But mm. they've all played different amount of games. It's just messed up. Yeah. Well, anyway, anyway I that's think what it is. That it is what it is. Um, 
shout out to Georgie for organizing this studio. We're working at the Kinks, obviously. You know? yeah, We've yeah. got two different mic stands. I think we might just get another one of these. Yeah, I think yours looks better than mine. Dude. Yeah. But the thing is, this that suits you because you can, you're can you upright and you've got your notes there. It kind of, it, like, it's, it suits your vibe. We'll see how we go, man. We'll try to, like, fix the beeping and the screen falling off halfway yeah, through. What was that beeping, bro? Was that the security alarm? Yeah, that's security. Oh, Maybe so we're being robbed and we just don't know. Perhaps, perhaps we'll go. We'll have, we'll have a quick look. I'll see. send James out because I'm scared and it's yeah. dark. <laughs> we'll check the till. If you if, if you uh, don't, you go in and check, and if you don't come out in ten minutes, then I'll call the police. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. You see, he's got my back, this guy. <laughs> um, but yeah, nah. Thank you guys. Thanks for very watching. much for watching. You know, sorry for the bit of uh, what's the word? Um, unprofessionalism. No, it's professional. Um, this is this is as professional as it gets, man. That that is. Look at, look at this screen. Look, I love this screen. That's that's excellent. Man. Hopefully, it can stay on the whole next time mm. and uh, we're vibing so that's it yeah catch you guys later thank you bye